Today we're going to be creating the cast iron material you see on your screen now, and I'll show you how to make a couple variations at the end so that you can change it up to how you like it. All right, so step one is going to be you want to shift A, go to mesh, and add yourself an icosphere, and give it five subdivisions. Then you're going to want to right click and shade smooth. And for the camera, you just basically you'll want to point the camera looking at the material. I just up the focal length quite a bit for me. And then I have a point light up here, but we're not going to be really using that, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. So then we're going to want to head over to the shading workspace. And then we're going to want to drag this section up just to make it a lot easier to look at. And then over here in the top left, you're going to want to hit this drop down and change it to the 3D viewport. And you can go into the camera view, and now you've got a nice angle of everything. And then you scroll over with middle mouse, switch to EV render. And this is a cycles material, and it also works in EV. And then you're going to want to turn off the scene world so that we get the this HDR kind of going around. So that we get the nice lighting and everything. And for your EV settings, if you need to change anything, most of you probably already know, but I just have ambient inclusion, bloom, and screen space reflections turned on. And in film, I mean color management, I just have it on medium, high contrast, and standard. This doesn't really make a difference. It just makes things look a little bit nicer. However, you can use a filmic instead of standard if you want. And it tends to look a little bit nicer, but I prefer to use standard when making these materials. Anyways, let's get into it. So I'm going to hit new, and we're going to want to call this material cast iron. Let's just double score that. Cast iron. So this is a pretty simple material. Step one is going to be to go into edit preferences and make sure you've enabled the node wrangler add-on. It's completely free, and it will help you a lot of shortcuts making these materials. So just go ahead and check it, and then you'll be good to go. So step one is going to be shift it. A, and then add yourself a noise texture, like so. And then now we've got this, and then if you have it selected and hit Control T, you'll get the mapping and the texture coordinate node. So what this does is it just maps the texture around the whatever we choose, and we want it to go around the object, so we're going to click the object into the vector. And then I just hit H on those to hide them because we're not going to be using them much, and it can get distracting. And so then we have this noise texture. Then we can right. We can click on it and then hit Control Shift B and then duplicate it two times. And this is the most complicated part of the thing, and then we'll be done, basically. So all we have to do now is add three color ramps in front of each of these noise sectors, like so. We get one, two, and then three. And then plug in the factor from each of the noise textures into their color ramps. Now what we're going to do is change a couple of values and then we'll be good to go. So on this top noise texture, I'm going to so click the color ramp, control, shift, left click the color ramp, and this will give us a preview of what that is actually looking like on uh, the material. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to switch the scale up to a 10, the detail up to a 10, and the roughness up to a 0.7. So this part of it is the bigger details on the bump and the surface of the cast iron and then this middle one will be the middle size details and then this will be the tiny details as always so then step two is we're going to be moving this in to about a point eight it doesn't have to be perfect but you can make it perfect if you want because that's what i'll be using and this one's going to be point two so basically what this is is it ups the contrast in the height i mean in the color difference in here which is going to represent the bump map and so the bigger the details the bigger the difference and so, yeah. Anyways, that's all done. And then we just have to do the middle one. The scale on this is going to be a 25. The detail is going to be a 12. Roughness will be a 0.7 as well. And then this is going to be brought into a 0.1. And this will be brought into a 0.9. And you can play with these values as you want later on once we finish. But this is, this is what I'll be using but you feel free to mix around as you choose. The last one is going to be a small detail, so if we can... Oh yeah, and I'll show you what this one's looking like. You see? This one is the smaller details, bigger details, smaller details. And remember to view this, you can hit Control shift and left-click when you have the Node Wrangler add-on installed, and you can preview what each individual part of the texture is looking like. And then step three 
It's going to be control shift left click on this bottom one. And we're going to be upping the scale on this one to a 50, detail to a 14. And then we're going to be maintaining the roughness is a higher. And it's going to be 0 0.8 on this one. So scale 50, detail 14, and roughness 0.8. And then we're going to leave the black and white scales all the way on the ends because in these tiny details, we're not going to see lots of jagged parts and are like sort of like needles. It's going to be more of more smooth down there and the, when it gets into the small parts. So now that we have all our different parts, we have the big, medium, and the small. We just have to mix them. And to do that, we just need a couple of notes. We need mix RGB. And so sift day search mix RGB. So then we're going to switch the blending mode to multiply and then the factor to a one. Um, if you're using filmic, you can hit clamp. If standard, you can also hit clamp. It won't make a difference, but you can. I'll hit clamp because it works the same both ways. So then we're going to take the color from the top color ramp and plug it into color one, color from the bottom color ramp and plug it into color two. What this is doing is it's taking the color, the black and white, and it's basically multiplying them together. It's saying this times this equals this. And so that's what we're looking at. So then step two is we just need to add this guy down here. And so then we can click on this, Shift D, move that over here. And then we can put the color from the first one into the color one, color from the second one into color two. And control flip left click to preview it. And now we've combined all three of these together, and this is sort of what we're looking like. And so it's looking really good. And make sure you go ahead and hit save. So just for precaution, if you haven't. I already have saved this on a different file, so we're all good. So, next step, now that we've done this, is to connect it into, we're gonna use this, basically we're gonna be using this for the bump, for the roughness, and the metallic map. And so first, so use it for the bump, we're gonna hit Shift A and search for a bump node. And we're gonna plug in the color, into the height, into the normal, into the normal. And to see what that's looking like, we're going to hit control shift and left click on the principal BSDF right here. Give it a second. And then we're seeing some bumpiness on it. And it's already looking like the right sort of texture. It's a little bit too bumpy though for a metal, depending on how much you want it. And so we'll mess with that in a little bit. I'll leave, we'll leave it for now. It'll be pretty bumpy and jagged, but it'll get fixed in a little bit. So then for the roughness, we're going to remove this color and then plug it into roughness as well. And so what this is saying is, on the parts where it's smoother, it is uh, shinier than the parts where it's not. And for the metallic map, we're gonna hit Shift A, we're gonna search, and we're gonna search for an invert node. Basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna take this color that's in the, this one right here, and it's gonna take all the whites and then make them the opposite. So if you have a 0.2, it'll become a 0.8, etc. It'll just be the opposite of everything. So then we can move this color into here, and this color into the metallic map. And if we control shift left click on here, we'll give it a second. It begins to look pretty shiny, just like a cast iron should. And so that is really what we're looking for. But like I said, it is very bumpy, and we don't really want that. So we'll go ahead and switch that now. So what we want to do, I mean, you can take the distance down, or the strength down, but I prefer to leave the strength at 1 always and to move the distance. So we're going to make this distance a 0 0.05. So what it's going to do is it's going to smooth everything out quite a bit. And you can even make this smaller if you want. You can play around with this as you wish. If you bring it all the way down to the 0, it looks like a very, very polished iron. But if you move it down to like 0.015, you get something that maybe you'd see on a hammer or an axe or something, a battle axe or something like that. Or you can even go smaller. You can basically choose what it depends on what you're working with. I'm just going with the base material of cast iron. So I'm going to go with 0 0.05 so that we get a little bit of bumpiness, but not too much. So then all we have to do is the color. And the color is very simple. We're just going to be at Shift A and search for a color ramp. And then put that right here. Now all we have to do is plug this color into the factor. We're going to change this black. And we're going to change the value on it to a 0.5. And this white, we're going to change the value on this to a, not saturation, to a 
eight five, like so. Then, as to the distances of where these should be, we're just going to drag this one in to about point six five, holding around there. And then you're going to want to just plug the color into the color, and you can see a slight change there. And then now, after that, the entire material is done. And like I said earlier, you can mess around with the distance a little bit here and make it a little bit shinier as you want. But anyways, that is the entire thing. And I hope you enjoy watching and I will see you guys next time.